we're going to take a look at how we would change the hand on a M9000 series mortise lock manufactured by Dorma Architectural Hardware. Now when we talk about changing the hand, what we're actually talking about is being able to install this lock into doors that swing in different directions. There's four ways that a door could swing. It can be hinged on the right hand side, which would be a right hand door. It can be hinged on the left hand side, which would be a left hand door. It can also swing inward or outward. And those are referred to as right hand reverse and left hand reverse. So we have to be know how to be able to change this lock chassis to work on all four kinds of swinging doors. Now the first thing that we're going to look at is how we change which side of the door is locked. Right now this is the locked side of the door. The reason I know that is when I turn it over you're going to see that there's two screws here. These two screw heads always face the inside or unlocked side of the door. Now what will happen is we're going to take these two screws out, I'll do that right now. We use a number two Phillips screwdriver and we unscrew these screws and then we're going to turn the chassis over and we're going to see that there are two screw holes in the same position on the other side of the chassis. Now what these screws are actually doing is when we screw them in, the shaft of the screw is actually moving the locking member from one side of the chassis inside to the other side to change which hub is locked. When I turn this over, it's a little bit hard to see, but I can see that there's a metal plate right underneath these two screws. Matter of fact, if I, if I take this small Allen wrench and push down, I just felt that metal plate push to the other side of the chassis, which locks the other side of the door. Now to keep it from moving back, I'm going to take and I'm going to screw these screws in, and that's going to make sure that the locking plate that locks one hub or the other is now locking the opposite side of the door. So this is now the locked side of the door. That only should take you about 30 seconds to change which side of the door is locked. The next thing that we might have to change is the position of the latch. Now if you notice, we have this nice big stainless steel latch and it's got a curved face on it. That curved face has to hit the strike on the door frame to be able to close the door. If we change from a right hand to a right hand reverse or a left hand to a left hand reverse, this would actually be facing the wrong direction and when it goes to close, it will not retract. So what we're going to have to do next is to see how we would actually change which direction the latch faces. You notice there's a little hole right here where there's an Allen screw. I'm going to take an Allen wrench and I'm going to unscrew that Allen screw. Once I unscrew this all the way, I'll pull the screw out and it's going to allow me to pull the latch out of the chassis so that I can reverse it. I'm going to set this aside so I don't lose it. Now I'm going to very carefully pull out on the latch and you'll see that I can pull the latch right out of the case. Now I'm going to turn the latch over and reinstall it. But one of the things you also need to be aware of is there's this small anti-friction tongue in the middle of the latch. Its job is to help make the door easier to close. This little bump on it needs to go inside the case. So I'm just going to hold it up so that that will install back inside the case. As I go to slide it in, I'd also like you to notice there's the shaft that it is mounted to and it can move over to the side a little bit. So I'm just going to use my fingertip here in order to position it so that it's easier for me to get the latch back onto that shaft. I'm going to slide it back into the case, pretty much like this. And you notice I did get the dead latch or the, the anti-friction tongue back in where it needed to be. I'm going to turn this back over again and now you can actually see where that Allen screw needs to be reinstalled. I'll slide it back in. I'll take my Allen wrench and I'll tighten that back down. And we may need to just give it a little bit of a wiggle just to get back into the, into the hole and onto the shaft. And I should be able to tighten that right back down in. So let me twist that down in. 
Now it's very important when we tighten these screws for changing the door hand that we tighten them all the way. It's very important that they not break free from vibration and use, so I'll make sure it's nice and snug. So at this point, I have now changed which way our latch faces. And just so that you know, this I had a little piece right here. Its job is to dead latch, deadlock the latch. So once the door closes, somebody can't slip the latch with a credit card or a piece of plastic. And because it can move back and forth, we don't need to worry about changing that. But now we've changed which side of the door is locked, we've changed which side the latch faces, but there's a third uh, adjustment that we also need to be aware of. This piece right here, the armor on the edge of the door, you'll notice that there are two screws, one on the top right above the chassis and one right below. If we loosen these two screws, it is going to allow this face plate to rotate by 15 degrees to match the bevel on the edge of the door. A lot of people don't realize, but the edge of the door is actually cut typically on an angle. Now there's three positions we might tighten this. Some doors actually have a square edge. Some doors have a bevel facing this way. Some have a bevel facing this way. So in order to change the bevel, we move it to match the edge of the door, and then we're going to re-tighten these screws on the top and bottom. So I just tighten the top one, I'll tighten the bottom one, and once again make sure that they're snug. You don't have to be crazy about it, but we don't want them coming loose later. So now we have completed changing the hand on the lock. We've changed which side of the door is locked, we've changed which way the latch faces, and we have changed the bevel to match the edge of the door. These three things are all we would need to do to match any, any swinging door, and it should only take you a minute or two to make these changes.